So here we're drawing a stop start station for a contactor. Auxiliary contact of your contactor, which is also called your hold in contact. This is the normally closed contact of your overload. Wires on to the coil of your contactor. And that can be either a neutral there or maybe phase two. And it could be phase one over here, depending on whether it's a 400 volt or a 230 volt coil. And so you would normally expect them to hook the motor up here, so we would have a contactor up here with your three power connections for your motor. I always like to think of a contactor as just a big switch. There's your motor. Three phases onto your motor. And there is line one, line two, line three. So you push the start button, it energizes the coil, which closes the contactors, contact the con contacts which turns the motor on. Should the motor be drawing too much current, it opens this contact here, which is the normally closed contact of the overload, which turns the contactor off and then needs to be manually reset. Under normal circumstances, you stop, start it here, pulls the contactor in, closes this auxiliary contact, which closes at the same time as these, which then holds that in, so we call that a hold-in contact or a latch. And if you want to turn it off, you push the stop button, which of course opens that circuit. Important things to remember, start bu buttons are in parallel there. Stop buttons are in series. So a stop button there, and an overload is a stop button also in series. A couple of important things to note is this is a 240 volt coil, and it says just here. Also, when you look on the side of the contactor, you'll have a sticker like this. So this contactor has a sticker, this contactor has a sticker. So what this sticker tells you is how many amps the contactor is good for. So this one is good for 7.5 kilowatts at 240 volts or 11 kilowatts at 400 volts. Pull this one apart for you. So this is the top, comes straight down. So when the coil here and here is A1 and A2 gets energized, it pulls this here, that core gets pulled in and completes the iron core here, which is what pulls the contactor in. <coughs> if you had an old contact like this and you needed to keep this contact for some reason but needed to put a different coil in, the coils just come straight out and you can buy that coil on its own. See this one here is being wet at some stage so it's been pulled out. That goes there, your spring goes in next and that sits straight on top and gets screwed down. So one of the things that's probably most difficult is then translating a picture like this onto where you need to connect it on the contactor. I'll transfer it from here onto the picture. So to start with we've got our start button and that goes right there so that's easy and the stop button does the same but opposite and it goes right there. So on our coil we've got A1 and A2 and that is here. On our contactor, we've got line one, two, and three, which is one, two, and three, which on this is labeled as L1, L2, and L3. And on the other side, it's got T1, T2, and T3. And here is our auxiliary, which is normally open, and it is labeled 13 and 14. So this is 13 and this is 14. The overload which is here, most overloads, this is not the right brand for this, but it just goes straight into the bottom of there. See these three pins go into the bottom of the contactor and then see T1, T2 and T3 carry on here. And then you have your normally closed and normally open contact. The thing to remember here is that this overload trips these contacts here. It doesn't break the line between here and your cable. 
So if you don't use these contacts within your circuit, it won't trip the overload. It will just, it'll trip, swap these contacts over, but won't actually break the line. So now that we've got that labeled, you can also get um, extra auxiliaries for the contacts like this. They just sit on there and slide on the top. And now when this contactor pulls in, it will also pull this in. So you could control two three-phase things off this single contactor if you wished. I'm gonna start wiring it up exactly how you see here and we'll use this contactor to turn on our light. So because it's control gear, I'm just gonna use a bunch of this numbered black wire. You can, when you're doing this in a actual job, you can get a multi-core cable that's numbered. So I've put the contactor here because then you can see this is our auxiliary coming into here, which is 13 and 14. The numbers and letters will be different depending on the brand of contactor you buy. Okay, so now we've got our light here. <clears throat> And I've stripped the cores up because, under normal circumstances, the earth and neutral would go to the earth and neutral bar. But in this scenario, I need our phase to get to the bottom of the overload, and I need our neutral to get here to the end of our um, extension lead. So I need to strip this A2, which is here, which is the end of the neutral, and this neutral up here from the light all need to end up together on this neutral for the lead so that we have a neutral path for everything back to the switchboard. Other thing we need to do and usually in a switchboard you'd have um, your own three phases here fed by a circuit breaker but we also don't have that because we're simulating it so I'm going to take it from here um, from the end, of the end of the extension lead into L1. So we've got it plugged in now and just to be safe I'm going to use my pliers and screwdriver to press the button because usually these buttons would be behind the cabinet and there'd be a button on the front. So following the wiring diagram we've got a stop button, the current comes through here, currently can go through because that's a normally closed to our start button and at the moment the start button is open so it's not going. If I press that in the light turns on pulls the contactor in and obviously as soon as you let go of the start button it becomes open again but the auxiliary contact is keeping it closed via this path here. It goes through the overload, a test and a reset button, um, goes through the normally closed, through into the coil, out of the coil, back to the neutral. Now you can press stop like that, start again, stop again. You can add as many starts in parallel as you like with this start button and as many stops as you like in, par in series with this stop button. Another cool little thing, if you're testing this in a switchboard, you can just press in on the contactor like this and that will energize this auxiliary bypassing the start. That's the basic working of a contactor. I hope you found that talk through helpful. Like the video and follow for more from an NZ Tradie.